I'm John Seaman and I'm here at Road America Racetrack in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin for the 28th annual Elkhart Lake Vintage Festival hosted by the Vintage Sports Car Driver Association. This is the weekend of September 6th, 7th, and 8th. On Friday there will be practice sessions for the different race groups followed by an hour enduro. Saturday will feature the 2.5 liter Trans Am racing group followed by Gather on the Green car show in the evening. Triumph is the featured mark this weekend and you'll see a large variety of Triumphs from early TR2s up through and including the TR8. Several other notable cars that are appearing this weekend will be a Cunningham race car that ran here at Elkhart Lake in 1952 the 1958 Lister Jaguar Nobly that won the Elkhart Lake Road Races in 1958. Kaz Kastner is the guest of honor this weekend and Kaz had a lot of success back in the 60s preparing triumphs for racing. Kaz Kastner is also involved in a series of races called the Kastner Cup. The winner of the Kastner Cup is judged based on racing performance, car preparation and appearance, and enthusiasm. On Sunday, the Elkhart Lake Vintage Festival will also feature the Kimberly Cup, the Sheldon Cup, and the Elkhart Lake Cup. I'm with Dan Fowler and Robert Johns. These gentlemen have a very interesting history in racing back in the late 50s, I believe. Dan, would you start us off with a little bit of uh, how you got into the sport? I started racing stock cars uh, before I, uh, I got into the sports cars, but then I got in the service. I went and they um, were stationed a little airport base of uh, Bitburg in Germany and it was about 30 miles from the Nürburgring so I got a lot of a lot of time in and uh, belonged to Bitburg Sports Car Club and we used to hold meets up there and uh, so uh, we got a lot of time on the ring and I think I got to know the ring probably as well as most average Germans did at the time and uh, helped out a lot in the race about 54 and 53. Robert, uh, what, how'd you start it in here? Uh, ironically, uh, Dan and I were members of the Spitberg Pork Car Club. I had been to Watkins Glen in 51 and 52 and got the bug about sports cars. I enlisted in the Air Force and, and ended up being shipped to Germany and, uh, and, we're, and was stationed at Bitburg in the same squadron. Uh, as Dan, and then he got a, an MGTF, which he had not mentioned. But but uh, and then he used to take him and me up to the Nurburgring with him. And then eventually I got an MGTC, and I used to go to the ring and practice. And I didn't even know about the race until I came back from Africa. Uh, and here he had won the race, won it, and raced it, and won it. Now, what year was that, Dan? When you won? It was 1954, August. Yeah. Along with the uh, Grand Prix of Europe, so there are a lot of spectators there. I think they estimated there were 250,000 spectators at that race. Now, after the service, uh, did you stay with Triumphs after that? Oh, yeah, I raced Triumphs in the United States uh, for a couple of years after that. And then I uh, got an AC Bristol later. 
good time with it. Raced it here at Elkhart Lake several times. It was probably 58, 59, somewhere in there. Mostly through 58, I raced it pretty heavy. Now, Robert, uh, did you do any racing when you got back? Well, before I, I before, before Dan shipped home, right shortly after he raced at the Nürburgring and won this race at the Nürburgring, and I continued to race my Triumph in local events, and then uh, in the spring of '56, I, I went to a, a racing driver school in Monza, Italy, and. Uh, and that was a big help uh, to me, not f so much from what we learned, but from the notoriety of being there in the uh, connections, connections. I raced a race at the, an Armed Forces Day in the spring of 56 in Germany and won the race there. And then I came back to Germ back to the States then right shortly after that. And, uh, and, uh, and then because of the success I had had in Germany uh, and, uh, and going to this wrestling this Swiss Racing Driver School, uh, I got recommended to to uh, be, be uh, invited to to drive for the Triumph team at Sebring. What year was this? Now? In, in '57, and I drove for the Triumph Triumph team in '57. Took 19th overall and first in place, the first in class. And then after that, uh, I could see my future was not in the sports car racing. So I went off. To to, took uh, to college and got, got a degree in engineering and, and was and had a career career in mechanical engineering. Well, I raced all through the central division here, uh, at Mid Ohio and Elkhart Lake and Brainerd International and Milwaukee. I had um, both the Triumph and the AC Bristol. Well, so there was a four-year stretch there where I won 85 percent of the races I entered. Now I understand that you uh, later got involved in Formula V's and this is the 50th anniversary of Formula V. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I was racing stock cars for a while and I really didn't like going around in circles so and road racing was my thing and they come out with this Formula V and it looked like it was going to be pretty reasonable racing and so I got into that. I bought a beach kit and put it together myself and built an engine up for it and went out racing and I ended up winning the uh, American Road Race of Champion. Yeah, 65 was uh, um, when the uh, American Road Race of Champions. Yeah, you're both friends with Kaz Kastner and he, he is our guest of honor this weekend. And uh, the Kastner Cup, have you been to any of those events uh, in the last couple of years? It started uh, in, at Watkins Glen. Uh, and when was that? Five years ago. And then uh, I've been to all of them since then. I really miss the racing, but uh, after a while you get too old to do it. And uh, But uh, it's left me with many great memories, and uh, uh, I enjoyed uh, all the time I did it. We all regret uh, not continuing on. It's an expensive proposition, and, and, and uh, that's one thing that you, you have to uh, balance with uh, with. Uh, uh, with yes, it was, we may have had the ability to drive, but, but did we have the ability to to, to support it? And so uh, you make your choices in life.
I'm with Cass Kastner. Cass is an honored guest here at the Elkhart Lake Vintage Festival. I got interested in sports cars back in the early 50s, and 51 and 52 with the MGs. And um, rather than uh, go to the dealers who didn't know anything, I, I sent to England for books and I sent to Germany for tools. And uh, I started working on my own car and, and figuring out things. I made mistakes, and, but I found out how things worked. When I started, I didn't know a, a camshaft and a spark plug. And uh, in two years, I was building engines and, uh, and tuning other people's cars and, and beating everybody while I was doing it. So uh, that's, that was the start in it and just kind of expanded from there. Uh, eventually, uh, I uh, got into a TR2 in about 1955, 54, 55. I raced that car about eight months, and uh, I had, at the same time, I had an MG Special that I built, where I built my own body on uh, under the uh, chassis, mm -hmm. the stock chassis, and uh, one would tow the other, and I never knew which was going to tow the, tow the other one home. And the closest race was about 350, 400 miles. So. In those days, uh, just a few races, and uh, they were uh, street races primarily. Aspen, Colorado, was my was my first one, and but in Salida, Colorado, and I did Buffalo Bill Hill climb. We had a, a race in Midvale, Utah. I came down to the coast for for the uh, the west coast for uh, the Pebble Beach race in 1956, uh, the last one that they ran on the 17 mile drive, and uh, I ran in the uh, Glendale Grand Prix in those days, and just missed a lot of races did wherever there was one that I had the time to, to get off and get there. I drove the car on the road there, raced it, and drove it home again. In 1958, I went to work for the Triumph distributor, mm -hmm. and in 1960, the factory bought them out, and uh, I became the service supervisor uh, for, I guess, the 11 western states. And uh, so I did that, and at the same time, I was racing my own car, TR3, uh, up through 1960, just in almost 61, and uh, I crashed it pretty good at Santa Barbara, in the Santa Barbara race, and the factory, or the, the uh, executives in New York found out that I had crashed the car and told me promptly that executives of this company do not race. So my choice was I could have a career with this company or I could continue on to driving cars that were never going to win me anything and uh, do nothing but cost because primarily I couldn't get in the, the really good cars because they were too, too big for them, too tall for them. So um, I made that choice and said, okay, that's what I'll do. But at the same time, uh, I started running the driving school for the California Sports Car Club, and I ran it for three years, teaching everybody else how to drive. Uh, the Kastner Cup has been going on now for how many years? This is, this is the 11th year. Uh, it started in 2003 at Mossport. And uh, I just, I went to one of the races back in mid-Ohio in 2002, and I saw some of the nice trophies that were given, a long time, old, uh, yearly annual trophies that were given by the MG Club. And I said, geez, that's a nice thing to do, because some of the trophies that the guys get are not much. I said, well, I'll buy a nice trophy, trophy, and I'll just offer it. And I made some rules. And so it's not all based on just that, that particular race, but uh, the car has to be nice, it has to be nice looking and all that, and that they have to be interested in vintage racing. And uh, so uh, that, that was it, and it's, it's worked out wonderfully well. The thing is that no one can win it two years in a row. Uh, it's not at the same racetrack ever, two years in a row. So it's been all over the country. It was in Mossport to start with. It went to California. It's gone to Atlanta twice. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, it's gone to Hallett, Oklahoma. It's gone to Watkins Glen. Uh, it's gone to Portland, uh, to uh, Button Willow in California. And next year it'll be in Texas. So it's getting now. It's getting now to where some the clubs are kind of vying for the opportunity to have the to have the, the the cup race, and so that's cool. It's great for the Triumph guys. They they talk about it for six months before the race, and uh, and they all seem to they gather together. And they, this particular place, they they've just done an absolutely marvelous job of organizing it. Joy Alexander, I think, has been the the, the spark plug in back of it to keep everybody looking in the in the same direction and down the road. It's 50 percent for track performance. So if a guy's a you know he's got a nice car but he can't drive, I'm not interested. I mean, it's too bad, but that's how it is. There's a lot of people who have a nice car, have a lot of enthusiasm, and can and good drive, and they do show the car off. But I'm looking as much as anything. I'm looking for a car that's performing out of class. 
a guy that's racing with people he probably shouldn't be racing with, with that kind of car. So that's why we've had Spitfires win, we've had TR3s, one, TR3 won last year, uh, we've had TR4s, a TR6, uh, the GT, or the uh, TR250K, that my old car, uh, that won one year, and it was, but it, it's just, it depends on the circumstances and uh, the field of, of, of drivers and so on.
This is for our Kimberly Cup race, which is the time event, of course, and it's three minutes and slower, for lack of a better term. And they get a one second, one second grace period because never quite sure. And our winner, David from Crowledge, <laughs> had a 259.327, so he squeaked in with three tenths of a second where he would have been disqualified. <laughs> so he knows how to play the game. So he should get an award for that alone. <laughs> so we have the BSCDA, here's your, your Kimberly Cup bottle of wine, and in your 15 <laughs> seconds of fame. <laughs> and by far, this is my best time ever. Well, I just picked the right time. They really won. Yeah. So yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm with Robert Williams, and this is one of the rare Cunningham C4Rs. Can you give us a little bit of the history of the car? It's a 1952 C4R Roadster, the most successful of all the Cunningham racing cars in terms of races entered and wins, and its most distinguished victory, if you will, was to be third at Le Mans in 1954 and first in class. Uh, Briggs Cunningham achieved that level of success at Le Mans twice, once in 53 with a C5 and with this car in 54. His goal, of course, was to win Le Mans. Do you know how many other races the car was involved in other than Le Mans? Yes. Uh, it won here at Elkhart Lake in uh, 52 with John Fitch. I think there were seven or eight victories, number of seconds. John Fitch was the primary driver. Um, this car did not win Sebring. We thought for many years it did. Uh, it is the other Roadster, which is in the Collier Museum. The engine, does this have the Chrysler in it? It's the 331 Hemi, and uh, highly modified by Chrysler. We've had it apart a couple of times, and uh, it was... Uh, 
very interesting what we found. Another kind of interest part of the car was that um, it has a Seattle bus transmission. I, and, and there was a real problem having all that torque and how could you handle it with reliability. Uh, a third interesting part which is visible if you take the uh, uh, front wheels off is that there are sensors in the drum brakes there and the idea was that you wanted to wear the brakes down at 4 a.m. to exactly halfway and a light would go on on the dashboard if they got at that halfway point. They were thinking about the future, no question about it. Do you know about what the car weighs? I think it's 2,400, uh, about 600, uh, 360 uh, horsepower. Okay. Um, how did you find out about the car? My cousin owned it, and when we were together one time, um, I just said, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. And he did. So I took up the cause. That was 1983. And uh, in the succeeding 25, 30 years almost now, um, I've tried to celebrate what Briggs Cunningham was in terms of a, a real pioneer, a real gentleman, and uh, a very major commitment to American motorsport. It was just extraordinary what he did. Uh, there's a website, BriggsCunningham.com, that uh, gives a lot of the detail. So I've had the car now for this period of time. I sold it actually in 1990 to a neurosurgeon in Philadelphia, Fred Simeon, who has a fabulous museum. Uh, the provenance of the cars that he has is just extraordinary. Well, this is such a rare treat and such an exciting time here to have the C4R at Road America for this Elkhart Life Vintage Festival, so thank you for bringing it. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. It's like coming home. Uh, we did several races here in the 85, 6, 7, 8, and uh, the goal was to participate, not to win and in that context celebrate what Briggs Cunningham uh, uh, meant to motorsports in America.
I'm with Tony Garmay, and he has a 1967 Triumph 250K, which is a special car. Uh, what's the association with Cass Kastner? Well, 1967, Cass Kastner came up with this, uh, with Peter Brock to come up with a production-based sports car that they could go race to help promote the Triumph product. And uh, Pete, uh, Pete Brock designed the body, and Cass and Pete both built it through 67 and raced at Sebring 68. How did you find and acquire the car? Well, actually, I'm just a mechanic. There's a family in Seattle okay. where we're based who own the car, and uh, I originally restored the car for them in 1998, and it gets used once a year for the K-Cup race, and it's still going pretty good. It is. I was watching it yesterday, and you have some pretty good times with it. Well, that's, thank you for that. The car's uh, doing quite well, yeah. Enjoy. It's uh, rather lightweight, I assume, and uh, what's the uh, spec on the engine, CCs, etc.? Actually, it's not as light as you think. It, it's 2,200 pounds, all the lights work, turn signals, okay. wipers, washable. Everything works as it was uh, for the uh, FIA prototype rules in 1968. And uh, current weight, 2,200 with a 2-liter GT6 engine, 165 horsepower at the flywheel. Sorry. Yeah. So it's, it's not overly powered, but it, it's a bit... It ha the handling is a little, has its own idiosyncrasies. It's a little odd with the arrow. And uh, the driver adjustable wing is bolted in a fixed position because when it closes, nothing good happens. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, this is the end of our weekend, and it is award time. We've got a class award based on top time in each of these categories. Are we ready? We're ready. We're All ready. right. First off, Spitfire with a time of 2.49. Jerry Barker. TR3 with a time of 2.59. Andrew Wilms. We started that uh, in 2010 on the anniversary. Kyle Kohler. I know. I know. 